welcome. So today we're going to talk about a novel entitled The Perfect Nanny or Lullaby, depending on which translation you get. It is The Perfect Nanny in the US and Lullaby everywhere else. It is a French novel. The original title is Chanson Douce and it was written by the Franco-Moroccan writer Leila Slimani. It also won the Prix Goncourt as the best novel in 2016. The Prix Goncourt is the most prestigious French literary award. And of course, this novel has become a bestseller in France and internationally. The English translation is by Sam Taylor, but I read the book in the original French. I'm going to link to both versions, both the original version in French and translated versions in the description box for this video. As you know, I always review books without spoiling anything, and it is actually very easy to talk about this novel without spoiling it because the big thing is all there, it happens on the first few pages. And I think most people who read this novel already know what the main thing is. Okay, so this novel deals with the murder of two very young children by their nanny. That's how the novel begins. And then the rest of the novel, most of the novel, it's a long flashback telling you the story of the nanny and of the children's parents who are a middle class couple from Paris. They have two young children and at first Miriam, the mother, stays at home to raise the first child. But when child number two comes along, she decides to go back to work as a lawyer. And the father is a music producer who keeps very late hours and is also very passionate about his job. So they both want to work, so they have to hire the perfect nanny. This novel is said to be inspired by real events that took place in New York City back in 2012. Apparently, Leila Slimani read about the case on a magazine or a newspaper and that's what inspired her to write her novel. But she makes this novel about class struggle and specifically female poverty and desperation in modern day France. Now, I strongly believe that despite the French setting, this story would make sense if you said it anywhere else. It wasn't difficult for me to imagine this very same story taking place elsewhere in Europe, in North America, in Asia, in Latin America. You would have to change some details about the background of some of the characters, but it could work very well said in other places. Some critics have described this novel as a thriller and I am not a big reader of thrillers. I'm not a reader of thrillers at all, but this novel kept me wondering why the nanny murdered those children and uh, how it came to that. So at first, Louise seems perfect. Not at first in the novel, but when we go and do the flashback, when we first encounter Louise, when the parents first encounter her, she seems perfect. She's like a modern day French version of Mary Poppins. When you know that and you know what she's done, which happens at the very beginning of the novel, you read to find out what actually happened, what was the lead up to that, what dark secrets she possibly kept that made her do what she did. I have to admit that I read this novel compulsively over one day or two. It is a propulsive novel. There is a lot of tension in the novel. There are some very dark episodes as well, but if I sat here and described those episodes to you, well, I would be one spoiling the novel, but I would also probably sound ridiculous. Those things would probably sound ridiculous if I told you what they are in my own words. But those very dark episodes made a big impact on me and they haunt me to this day. And I read this novel weeks ago. But I didn't read the novel for that, okay? The tension might have kept me reading, but it's not what I was interested in or what I thought was the best thing about the novel once I finished it. I was actually a lot more interested in the portrayed of the socioeconomic conditions that Slimani paints in her novel. Because gradually, as we go forward, having gone back to the beginning, if you see what I mean, we learn a lot about Louise. A clearer, more realistic picture beyond that image of the perfect nanny begins to emerge. So Louise is no longer the perfect nanny the more you read on. So who is she or what is she? Well, she's a poor woman, poor in the sense of having no money, she has a fragile mental health, lots of unpaid bills, lots of debt, and 
She has had a brutal past and we get to learn about all of that. But that's all about Luis's past. What happens in the time that she's hired by this couple? Well, her situation is pretty much the same, only that now she has an extremely demanding job that is also emotionally exhausting and which doesn't even allow her to earn a decent living or deal with her debts. I don't know about you, but I've met people who live under similar conditions. I don't think people like Louise are really difficult to come by in this day and age. Of course, none of that justifies her crime, but knowing everything that we get to know about her reading the novel, and I'm not gonna go into the specifics here, but does the crime make sense knowing what we find out in the novel? Well, that's for you to decide. If I sat here and told you everything that Louise goes through in the novel, everything that she goes through in her life as well that is depicted in the novel, that still wouldn't be enough for you to be convinced of whether the novel makes sense, well, the crime makes sense or not, because whether you are convinced of that or not, I think will depend on how you react to how the story is written. And I have to say that the story convinced me. Another remarkable thing about this book is the uncomfortable intimacy between Louise, the children, and her employers, the children's parents. At some point, for example, all of them go to Greece on vacation. Well, Louise is not on vacation, obviously. They take her there as a nanny. At first, I don't think they're even sure whether they're gonna take her or not, and then they decide to take her with them. Now, reading about that made me feel very uncomfortable. I think that it is possible to read this novel as a thriller, but because I am not a big reader of thrillers, I'm not qualified to say whether it works as a thriller, whether it's a good thriller, an average thriller, a bad thriller, I don't know. I don't read thrillers, so I have no idea. But you could also go a bit deeper, which is what I did, and read this novel as a work of art about women of different social classes and cultural backgrounds and maternity. And here we're not just dealing with Louise, we're also talking about Miriam, the uh, children's mother, uh, she is from a country in North Africa, but she lives in France. Uh, so we know that she's an Arab, we know that she speaks Arabic, and we know that she's a Muslim. That becomes clear, but it's subtle at the same time, but it's there in the text. Not much is made out of that, but that comes out in the novel at some point when she interviews a Moroccan, I think, a nanny, for the job before she engages uh, Louise. And she's reluctant to get a woman from that background because she's afraid of the intimacy that might happen between them because they share uh, a common language and the same religion. So she doesn't want that. And in the end, she goes for Louise, who is a white French woman. Don't know how, if she's Christian or not, but she's certainly not a Muslim. And that's also interesting here, because in a way, as we know when we read, and also we know this from real life, in places like Paris, the job of nanny is usually reserved for women from other countries. For, it's, it's usually considered a, an immigrant job. And here that role is reversed because the mother, we don't know whether she is an immigrant or not, but she is from a North African background and the nanny's white French. But going back to the main issue, which is the infanticide, the killing of the children, well, I don't have children, um, but I can imagine that a parent's worst nightmare would be for something like this to happen to their children. And I can also imagine that it cannot be easy to leave your children under the care of a stranger. Or perhaps that's something that has become too easy and that's also part of the problem that many parents don't give it a second thought to leave their children with people from outside the family, people they really don't know. This novel clearly plays into all those fears, which are not fears that I have personally, but I imagine a lot of people reading this novel, particularly if you have children, you probably have those fears. So I'm not sure if it's a good idea to read this novel or not, but I would say that it is probably a good idea because it will 
give you something to think about and perhaps realize that the people that you hire to work at your home are still people with their own baggage, their own problems. Okay, now I'm starting to think about who I would recommend this novel to, okay? Now, if you are someone who reads for plot and perhaps are a bit nitpicking, I think you'll probably find certain flaws in this novel, but I have to say that I read The Perfect Nanny several weeks ago and what has stuck to me are the episodes when Louise is humiliated by the family or in other circumstances by other people. There is one scene in particular, which is not even the strongest scene in the novel, but there is this one scene where Louise's employers, the couple, find out about her debts and they confront her about it. And I find that episode even more shocking than other episodes where Louise displays her cruelty. It's been days or even weeks since I read this novel and much of it has stuck to me very vividly. Now, I'm of course curious to read more by Leila Slimani. I know that her French novel Adele, which in French is entitled Dans le Jardin de l'Ogre, and also uh, her latest novel The Country of the Others or Les Pays des Autres are available. I'll probably read both at some point. But let me know what you think about this novel if you've read it or whether you're going to read it based on my review or not. And I will see you again very soon on my next video. Take care.